him again. Father God, I just thank you today, Lord God, for this opportunity to stand before your people. I thank you, Lord God, that it be all of you and none of me, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for the strength that you give me right now, Lord God, to minister to your people. And I thank you for this word that you have given me, Lord God, that is doing something to help me, that it will help the body of Christ, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for our pastor, Pastor Melvin Silas, Lord God. And I thank you, Father God, for this opportunity that he has given us right now, Lord God. Lord, I submit myself to you, allow you to do all that you need to do through me, that your people will see you in me, and that they will take this word and run with it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My word for you today is God's positioning system. How many of you know what GPS is? <laughs> Naturally speaking, it is the global p positioning system, a satellite-based navigation system made up of at least 24 satellites. GPS works in all weather conditions anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day, with no subscription fees or setup charges. <laughs> How GPS works? GPS satellite circles the Earth twice a day in a precise orbit. Each satellite transmits a unique signal and orbital parameters that allow GPS devices to decode and compute the precise location of the satellite. Awesome, huh? GPS receivers use this information to calculate a user's exact location. Now, if man can create something like that, do you think your Father in Heaven has that also? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's where I'm going with it. I just want you to see. Um, if we flip that to the spiritual, the GPS is God positioning system. Before we start, I have two questions I need you to think about. Do you want to move forward with God, being the GPS of your life? Or are you in a position to receive the blessings God has for you? <laughs> the reason why I'm talking about positioning is because for the last two weeks I've been put in a position whether I'm going to stand and trust God or is I'm going to believe what the world is showing me and saying. We all are facing something in this world that we don't understand. But I mind you and ask you to start trusting God in that situation. Stop listening to people and talk to God. Don't allow people to tell you what the outcome's going to be. God is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. Yeah. He knows what is required and what is needed of each one of us. A lot of times we are going through things that will help us in our life, that will give us strength. If you remember, Pastor taught one message about the rubber band, how you're being stretched wider, longer than you could ever imagine. You don't really realize what your faith is until you're up against an obstacle. That's when you start to recognize that I'm going to trust you in spite of what I see. I'm going to breathe you in spite of what I hear. I'm going to rest this situation right before your throne. We all have something that we're dealing with. But you must know that God positioned each one of you. You're not here by happenstance. You're here to be positioned to do kingdom work. We are to go outside these walls. But you have to be prepared. Even the disciples knew they had to be prepared. They couldn't do what they did until God showed them. 
illustrated to them by his lifestyle and what he did and whom he talked to. Don't be ashamed to go around whores and drunks and, and, and alcoholics. Don't be ashamed. You're there to help them, to bring them up out of that. No longer will we allow people on the outside to say, why are you associating with that person? Why are you associating? Because God told me to. We're supposed to take care of the lost, the sick. We're supposed to speak life into death situations. No longer will we allow our people that we see next to us die. We will speak an encouraging word. We will do whatever we can. We will pray for them. Because that's our job. It's not about us no more. It's all about God. And in this world we're in right now, everybody is selfish. It's all about me, 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 me. And I'm so tired of seeing selfies till it's just overwhelming. Excuse me. Had to go there. Because I'm tired of seeing folks taking pictures of themselves every day. I'm like, okay, now. Okay. What are we getting out of that? That's vain repetitious. That's not good. That's not God. That's not God at all. But as I go through this, I realize that God had a plan for each one of you. And a plan that you did not even know nothing about. You think that dream of owning your own business came out of you? You think that dream of being a mayor came out of you? You think that dream of being an evangelist came out of you? No, it was all God. It was all God. And as I go through this, I learned that I give God more thankfulness of what he's doing in my life. Because he used me, but it wasn't really me. It was the God in me. And, and the only way we're going to get to see what God has for each one of us, if we start allowing God to do what God needs to do with each one of us. So many times we pat ourselves on the back saying it's us. When you should be thanking God that it, he chose you to do it. Everything that comes to you that's good comes from him. God loved you before you were even born. God loves you in the midst of your stuff that you be doing. He loves you when you make a mistake. He loves you when you get back up again. God does not point his finger at you. He's always there for us. Scripture tells us that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. We are born again or born from above. John 3, 3 and 5. We become children of God. God promises each one of us an abundant life. But we can't have an abundance unless we position ourselves in God. Everything evolves around God. It does not evolve around us. We, we make plans to do things, but you must realize God has already planned something for you to do, and that is to help build his kingdom. You can't keep doing it your way and sitting up under the word and not know that he's telling you there's another direction he's trying to take you in. And in order for you to get to that direction, you're going to have to submit. I didn't understand it, but when Pastor Mel got sick, I understood what positioning is. I had to recall other pastors' wives that I've seen had to stand when they didn't know what to do. They stood on the word of God. I don't need to talk to nobody but God. God will do what God needs to do. And you know, when I took him to the hospital, God was speaking in my ear all the whole time. He was saying, this is what the problem is. And I didn't tell the doctors nothing. 
I just listened. I said, well, he need this, 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 this. He said, oh, no, you don't need that. I said, yes, you do. He said, well, we, we'll see about it. I said, mm-hmm. When the Holy Spirit tells you something, ladies and gentlemen, don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Listen. He's positioning you for something greater, bigger, better. Adhere to it. Do it. We all think that we're in the right position right now, but we're not. Are you praying consistently without ceasing? Are you thanking God for putting breath in your body this morning? Just as something as simple as that. There's somebody that didn't wake up this morning. There's somebody that woke up this morning and half of their body is not moving. We have to stay positioned. Right now it is very vital that we stay positioned because the world is turning to self. So we as body of Christ need to continually pray, trust God, and don't look where we're at, but look where he's taking you to. Stay focused on what he's taking you to. Don't let nobody sway you. Never. Trust God. I don't know why I'm going there, but hey, God knows what he's doing with me right now. My main scripture today is, in the hearts, humans plan their course. But the Lord God establishes your steps. That's Proverbs 16 and 9. <laughs> in the hearts of humans plan their course. But the Lord establishes your steps. You can make all the plans you want to make. <laughs> but he got the last say so. That business you want, you better get on your knees and start talking to him. You better start praying about it. And I like that we pray at home by ourselves. But a lot of times we need to do corporate prayer. That's how we get things done. You can't do it in your house by yourself. We all have to come together on our knees before the throne of grace and ask God to intervene, to do what needs to be done. He can do the impossible. He's done it before. The same that he did for the show the disciples. He said, we're going to do greater, even bigger things than they did. But we have to trust the process. We have to keep our ear open to what he's saying. We have to keep our eyes open to what he's showing us. Keep looking up to heaven. Don't look down. Don't look to the left, to the right. But look up to heaven. Heaven has the answer. We keep trying to figure it out ourselves. We can't do that. We're out of order. Even me. And, and I, like I said, I had to recognize that God was positioning me in, in a place that I felt I was unworthy of. That I should not be. That I should stay in the back. But he says, you got something to say too. You got a word for people. Lean not to your own understanding. But in your, all your ways, acknowledge him. He will, he shall direct your path. We keep trying to do things in our flesh and God says, I need you all to be in spirit. Everything done is in the spirit realm. People don't see it, but you see it. Fab had a dream that she was pregnant and she seen the baby. That's God. Didn't nobody show her that, but that was a gift that he was placing inside of her, a plans that he was placing inside of her. But he was showing her. So now she needs to say, Lord, what would you have me to do with what you've shown me? Yes, yes, yes. How do you want me to go about what you've shown me, Lord God? Which direction do I go in, Lord, with this gift that you just shown me? How do I make it materialize into the earth realm? 
we don't realize that we all have gifts and talents but it is not for the world it is for God's kingdom it is for God's kingdom anybody that has a really truly accomplished anything in this world and, and know the word of God knows that it was God that placed that inside of them they couldn't have done it on their own no way in Titus 2 and 4 it says these older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children and to live wisely and be pure to work in their homes to do good and to be submissive to their husbands to live a godly life set apart for God did you hear me a godly life set apart our children watch everything we do Amen. you have doctors lawyers politicians all of them that you're raising you have to make sure that you're setting a good example for them you have to make sure that you're praying with your children. That's right. That's right. Not lip service, but actually grabbing their hands, getting on your knees and praying with them. That's right. That's Stop right. taking it for granted that somebody else needs to be teaching them. You need to teach them. Right. Ministry starts in your home first. That's right. That's right. We must be a brother and sister's keeper. Yeah. No longer can we allow the world to take control of something that God has gifted each one of us with. And us being in the body, we need to help our others that have children. Yes, yes. To encourage them to let them know that I'm going to speak life into your child. I'm going to do whatever I can to assist you, encourage you, to hold on to your children, to pray with your children, to love on your children. Yes. We're taking things to, to, for granted now in this world I'm seeing. Yes, yes, yes. People don't realize that babies, children are a gift from God. Yes. And he assigned them to you because he has a task for them. But you are the first person that they learn from. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And don't be ashamed when you make a mistake to your babies. Right. Apologize. That's right. Because hey. you're human. That's right. You understand me? Mm -hmm. You're human. Mm -hmm. We don't have to, we're not perfect. That's we're right. going to make mistakes. It's okay to say, Omara, I'm sorry, baby. Mommy didn't do that right. Ain't nothing wrong with making a mistake. That's, right. That's how we all learn. Right. But you teach your babies at home. So when they go out, they know what to look for and what to do. I never really realized that I was being positioned for what I'm doing right now until I was working at UCLA. <laughs> and I used to have prayer in the lunch room. I had about six ladies. I texted them all and I said, we're going to the lunchroom and we're going to pray. And they was like, prayer? You can't have prayer on, on the uh, company grounds. I said, we finna pray because there's some demons up in here and we got to get them out. Everybody was like, what you mean demons? I said, you're going to see. You're going to see. And as time progressed on, those women started to see what I was seeing. I never knew what they looked like until I honestly seen them walking around. And it was an eye opener. But I didn't understand what God was doing with me. I was just following the position he had placed me. And I was grateful that those six women were faithful in coming to prayer. And even when they stopped us from praying in, in the lunchroom, we would all stop at a certain time and at our desk and just pray for 15 minutes break. That's how I knew God was working in my life. That's how I knew God had an assignment for me. Never did I know that I'd be standing here. But I knew he had an assignment. And all I'm telling you is, if he got me, he got you. That's right, that's right, that's right. He got each and every last one of you in here. And whatever you've been struggling with, maybe you need to talk a little more with him. That's right. Not to people, but to him. Amen. Amen. Open your Bible. And don't, nine times out of ten, when I read my Bible, sometimes it just falls on a page. And that's the page I know that the Holy Spirit wants me to read. Position, family. Family, I need you to stay in position. 
Don't doubt what God's going to do with you. That's Don't right. doubt it. If you need healing, he's going to heal you. If you need deliverance, he's going to deliver you. Don't buck the system. Don't listen to people. Well, I've been trying. Well, you've been trying, but I know what God's going to do. When I went to see my husband last night, he looked so down. And the Holy Ghost said, take your oil out and anoint your husband from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. I said, whatever demonic that's walking up in this facility, it will not go past this door frame. And he is healed from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He was called and appointed by God. And you will not attach yourself to him. And when I left, he had life back in his body. Yes. Ain't God good? Yes. That's why I'm telling you all. We all are positioned to help somebody. Right. We all are here to pour into somebody, to strengthen somebody, to lead them the right way, not the wrong way, the right way. Yes. Remember, we all are, are, are living vessels for God. We, we have to be an example for God. Yes. Yes. We can't keep doing it our way. That's right. I tried it. It didn't work. Yes, yes. It's not prosperous, nor is it healthy. Mm -hmm. And it sure don't give me a seat up in, the, in heaven. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I know we all want to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody just sitting there, right? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In order to experience the supernatural life in Christ Jesus, you need to correctly position yourself. You must position yourself to receive the full benefits of God's wonderful promises. Our first thing in positioning ourselves is we need to have our ear gate open. I noticed back in the day I used to always get on the phone and call my girlfriend when I had an issue. And nine times out of ten it wasn't the right word. But thanks be to God he placed me with eight mature women in God that told me the right thing to do. Amen. We get fearful. We get anxiety in us. We, we get concerned. But the only one that's going to answer you truly is God. Yes. See, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff this week. I got bit by an insect. My hand swole up three times the size it was. Went to the doctor. He said, oh, that's God. I said, the name of Jesus. No, it ain't. <laughs> Who are you playing with? He looked at me. He said, oh, it's not. I said, no, it's not. I said, I had an allergic reaction to the insect that bit me. And I need something to stop the itching and the swelling. God, anyway, I said, yeah, that's the same thing y'all said about that diabetes. I said, but I don't take your, your medicine no more neither. He said, you don't? I said, no. He said, well, we got to test you. I said, you can test me. I said, but God got this one too. <laughs> he said, what? He sa I said, sir, no offense to your profession. I'm grafted in Jesus Christ. Jesus don't have it, and I certainly don't have it. I will not allow people to speak in my life something that's not so. We all are God's children. You speak to your situation. You speak to your mountains. Don't let people just put you in a coffin and put nails on you when God didn't say so. You're positioned for greater things in this world. 
but you have to walk in your authority. Yes. You have to realize that you have authority. Yes. Yes. Not your own authority, but his authority. Yes. Yes. That's so say, not by power, not by might, but it's by the Holy Spirit himself. Yes. You understand that they give you diagnoses and things of that nature, but you say, you know what, I'll take that into consideration. But the truth of the matter is, I'm healed by his stripes. Amen. We go there to get information, but we don't have to actually accept it. We're killing off our own selves by allowing them to speak a word. Remember, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Don't receive it, people. Please. Don't receive it. Know that God gifted you with his wisdom knowledge. That you can speak against those things that's in this world realm. You want life more abundantly. You want to be able to pass it on to your children's children, children. Do not allow the enemy to just cut you off. Trust the process. Trust the position in which he has you in right now. <laughs> but truly, he's got great things in store for you. He got great things in store for you. Praise God. Whatever situation you cannot be free from, feel anxiety unless you hear from God. Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing Hearing by the word of God. Notice, no hearing, no faith. Now you can't tell me you've been here this long and that you don't have enough faith to overcome some of them obstacles that you've been dealing with. The word says to speak to that, to that mountain and be thou removed. But I also need you to believe it. Yeah, it's going to keep coming up in your life. Yes, yes. But as long as you keep saying, Lord, I trust you for the process. Lord, I thank you for the outcome. Lord, I know your will is working on this. I know I'm victorious because of what you did for me. I know through all things, you're in total control. I will trust you. I will trust you. We cannot do this on our own. We've tried it. We've done it what the world did. But we, we didn't get any re good results from it. You want to leave a legacy to your kids, your grandkids. You just don't want to be just having what you have now and don't leave nothing for them. You want to leave something that they'll be proud of to say, to talk about. That they can help somebody else. We all are here to help one another. Yes. We cannot do this on our own. Yes. The second thing we need to adhere to is the word of God. Yes. Christians are called to be overcomers. Most of us seldom act like overcomers though. Mm -hmm. God has given us everything we need for life and godliness which is in 2 Peter 1 and 3 but most of us often seem to feel defeated by circumstances or by our own inadequacies like I told you my inadequacy was I don't need to be up here I'm going to sit down there and help and do whatever I can down there but God says no I got something else for you to do too you have to help build my kingdom too. And if what I'm doing is, is, is helping you to see where God is leading you, then do so. But don't do it today and forget about it tomorrow. See, that's what I'm saying. We have dreams and, and we keep those dreams before us. But I need you now to start keeping the word before you. Because the word is what's going to get you to where you need to go. Everything on TV is negative. Everything that we see on television is negative. It's so negative we can't even let our children watch TV. We have to sit there and watch it with them. 
to make sure nothing out of the norm is showing up while the TV is playing. I mean, I used to watch movies and I'm like, oh Lord, it wasn't showing that before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now you have to be very conscious yes, you do. of what you see and your children see. Amen. We all are examples for one another. And like I say, if you make a mistake, don't feel bad. Mm -hmm. Say I made a mistake. Right. You're human. You're human. Why do we feel as though we have to say, no, I didn't. Yes, you did make a mistake. Because you let the devil beat you down when you hold it in. And don't confess that I made a mistake. We learn teaching each other. There might be something you're doing that you could teach me about. It's something I've learned that I could teach you about. But the main thing I want you to know, we all looking to Jesus. We can't do this without him. Amen. I try very hard to recognize that being in position, you have to do things out of the norm. Yes, yes, yes. You have to go above yourself. And no offense, put them big girl undies on and straighten yourself up and say, you know what, and go on. I mean, sometimes you don't like to be in certain positions, but it's in order for you to grow, you have to be in that position. You have to be in a tight spot to know that God is truly working on you and working through you. Every one of us are very special to God. He has a lot in store for each one of us. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And if you keep your ear to him and your heart right, That's right. he will get you to the position that he has for you. can't tell everybody the position he's placed you in. That's right. That's right. Amen. Because people talk against the position he has placed for you. And you'd be surprised. Sometimes it's family. Nobody wants to know the truth, but that's the truth. That's between you and God. And as he's directing you and ordering you and connecting you with the right people, you keep talking to him and he'll get you to where you need to be. I pray that this message encouraged, enlightened, God's light bulb went on and showed you that he's positioned each one of us to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ever thought we could do. That's right. That's right. Do not forget who your father is. That's right. Do not forget who's been with you when nobody else was That's with right. you. Do not forget when you sleep at night and you wake up crying in the middle of the night. Who's holding you? Who's, who's talking to you? That's right. Do not forget Jesus. He loves each and every one of us. And he is truly worthy. Truly worthy. Truly worthy. Your position is in God. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your feet firmly planted in the word of God. Because that's what's going to help you to go to the next level. It's time for us to go to another level. Yeah. No longer will we keep doing what we've been doing. Right. We will reverence God. We will acknowledge him. And we will keep seeking him to do all that he needs to do for each one of us. My last scripture is Psalms 25, 4 and 5. Praise God. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me.
For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Family, I know we are being positioned for healing, deliverance, financial breakthroughs, open doors of opportunity, businesses, promotions, all of that's being given to you right now. Make these next two months be exceptional in him. May the Lord bless you all. Father God, I thank you for our viewers and listeners of this word today, Lord God. Let you be glorified and magnified in everything that I've said, Lord God. And I thank you, Father God, for this opportunity. I thank you, Father God, for my family here at the Great I Am Faith Center, Lord God. For I have to stand before them first before I can stand before anybody. That you will use me to teach them that you've got a position for them and you're ready for them to take part in it. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. Amen. Y'all know, 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 y'all know. Lord God, that was much. That was. Thank you.